you will all have seen this pyramid at some point, which kind of shows very few women at the top and then kind of more women at the entry level. So a few things that you think about. The first one is it often starts early. I have now been working and consulting with a number of companies, including law firms, for example. So I'll tell you an example from a law firm um, where we noted that you know, women weren't, women and people of color, women and people of color, such traditionally underrepresented groups, weren't included in the cool deals. So it started much earlier. You know, by the time that you're up for promotion to partner, you did have what the law firm called a thin file because you were never, never given the exposure to actually participate in the cool deals. And there's serious research on that as well, not just you know, my consulting experience, showing that, for example, in some of the biggest brokerage houses in the US, um, and we know that because it turned out to be a lawsuit, and then um, uh, academics came in and analyzed the data, women were paid less because they performed worse. So everyone thought, like, OK, well, that's pay for performance. And then only by unpacking, they realized that these brokers, the female brokers, were given worse performing accounts to start with. So we call this now performance support bias. Right? So when you think about accession in the organization, don't just think about the final stage. But you often have to go back and kind of see how were these people developed or not earlier on. Secondly, um, something to look for is this problem between performance and potential. Many organizations, I'm sure many of yours as well, evaluate their employees based on past performance, often on the x-axis and future potential on the y-axis. As you might imagine, he, it's here where our biases kick in in terms of potential. Because if we don't have many Ellen Johnson surleaves in leadership positions, we can't imagine that women will be ready for this kind of a job and therefore we evaluate their potential uh, more negatively. So think about potential. And then the last one is a super simple one, but I quickly have to mention it um, also because Harvard is doing it um, and is still doing it. So I've had some successes with my work, but not at my home, at my alma mater, I have, I'm sad to say, on that one in, in particular. Um, and that is we ask our employees to self-evaluate themselves before their managers evaluate them. And that's a practice that is um, uh, typical in about 90% of the organizations, probably many of yours. Many of you were nodding. So this is not rocket science to imagine that if I evaluate myself first and then I give you my evaluation, that might influence your judgment of me. So we've looked at 10 multinationals and we found both gender and cross-cultural differences. Because as you might imagine, there are cultures uh, in the world which are very willing to brag. I happen to live in one of them. Um, and then there's other parts of the world where people are not comfortable with shining the light on themselves and are much more modest. Now, if your manager has a curve to fit and gets somebody you know, who gives himself a rating of nine and another person who gives him or herself a rating of seven, you know, it's very tempting to kind of, even though you would have given both an eight, it's very tempting to just go with the nine and the seven because on average, you still have the same average. You have your curve and you make everyone happy. So sharing self-evaluations is just a very bad practice. Do not underestimate the power of role models. Yes, seeing is believing and real numbers do matter. Um, but having visible underrepresented groups in leadership positions can make a big difference. And the best evidence, in fact, comes from India, because India amended its constitution in 1993 with the provision that a third of all village heads were reserved for women. And this was interesting from a research point of view, because the third was literally picked out of a hat randomly. And as you know, India is a big country, so lots and lots of villages, which randomly had to have a female leader. And so it turns out that lots of papers have been written about this. The one that I want to highlight here is a recent one that was published in Science, showing that in villages which have been exposed to two female leaders in those now about 24 years, mindsets are starting to change. So I'm going to repeat that because as you already know, I am all about changing behaviors, not so much about mindsets. But through exposure, eventually, Mindsets can change. It doesn't happen by me telling you, don't discriminate. 
that's not going to work. But by seeing that women can actually make a difference and can be successful political leaders, mindsets can change. And in those villages which have been exposed to two, not just one, two, parents now um, hope for their daughters to become politicians.